Hello, everyone, and welcome to this lunch hour so long. My name is Kim from Kimberville, and we are doing part three today of the Lucky Us Pillow. Let's go ahead and get started. Whoa, we have an intro. <laughs> I feel so official now. Thank you, Andrew, for that fun little intro. And now you'll know about Lunch Hour So Longs with a little something uh, to introduce it. Now we need just a little jingle. Lunch Hour So Long. Yeah, I'm not one to, to come up with those, but I'm sure someone at Kimberbell will. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see so many people here. Hello, Anne and Karen, Lynn, Alice, Ruth, Dorothy, Colleen. Are you ready for the last part, part three of Lucky Us? Today is going to be so fast and easy, and you're not going to believe how cool this technique is that I'm going to show you because it is for doing your borders and your flange border. And as you can see here, let's get it up close. Oh, you can do this all in the hoop, which we love here at Kimberbell. Anything we can do in the hoop. Look at the rainbow in our border. Unbelievably cute, right? Just that little extra something. Wouldn't that be cute in a variegated thread too? Make it a rainbow variegated thread. We used gold on ours so it stood out from the green, but I think that would be super cute. And how about this one? Let's get an up close of the flange border. <gasps> oh, just so stinking cute. You've got the pots of gold, you've got the hats, you've got the shamrocks, all of the things that just work perfectly with this pillow. Love it. So, Easy, easy stuff. This download uh, comes as a separate uh, file if you're interested in doing background quilting at Kimberbell. So how you find it is you go to Kimberbell.com, go to click on products, it's at the top of the page, then click on background quilting, and there you will see all the borders, all the backgrounds, everything that we've got for these pillows. If you want, you can make it even easier by clicking on... Hmm, I think it's all projects. Let me, I'm going to check with my team here. Is it all projects? When you click on background quilting, I think there's an all projects button. Look for the lucky S and then you will see all the background designs that we used for this pillow. Today we're going to be using the background or the border design. So with that border design also comes a separate PDF set of instructions for doing that. Okay, so this is not part of the lucky S pillow. This is a separate um, design set. Okay, in your building your library of designs like we like to say. Brielle. It says by project. By project. Okay. So you will look at by project when you get to background quilting and there you will then click on lucky us and there you will see all the background quilting designs. All right. So um, let's talk about how this is done. I'm going to show you today the technique exactly how it is outlined in your in that download, okay, in the instructions that you're going to be getting with that download. I'm going to walk you through every step of doing it, just like you see in the download. But um, if you want to do even a more shortcut type of way for doing your borders, I recommend, here, let's go ahead and go to the front. If you want a little shortcut, it's going to save you a few steps. You can look at a video I did for the lunch hour so long for Candy Cane Lane. And if you go to that video, it's the third part of Candy Cane Lane. You're going to see how I show you a little trick on how to save yourself a little bit of time, a few little steps. But today I'm going to walk you through every step of the download. All right. So let's take a look at it. Um, well, before I do that. Our border designs come in six different widths, okay? They, they correspond with the widths that are most commonly used in, in quilts. So you would have a one inch width, two inch width, three inch width, four, five, and six, six inch widths, okay? So you're going to get 
all of those widths with these borders. Now, as far as the length of them go, what happens is that we corresponded um, these files to be used with the most common size lengths of hoops. For example, if you have a five by seven hoop, then the length that you're looking for is seven inch length. If you have a six by 10 hoop, the length you're looking for is 10. If you have an eight by 12 hoop, the length you're looking for is 12. And if you have a nine by 14 hoop, the length you're looking for is 14. All right, let me show you what that looks like on uh, these instructions, okay? So let's get in really up close, as close as we can. There we go, on here. You'll see, again, we're doing the block by block method. And I mentioned earlier that there are six different widths. The first number you see here is the width. So that is a one inch border, two inch border. I'm gonna go over here, three inch border, four inch border, five inch border, and six inch border, right? Each of those sections are the widths. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The lengths that you see next to it correspond with the length of your hoop. So I said that if you had a five by seven hoop, you would go with a seven inch length. Well, this one right here is a one by seven. If I had a five by seven hoop, I would be, and I wanted to quilt a one inch uh, border, then I would I would make sure and, and upload the one by seven design. If I have a 10 inch length hoop, I'm going to choose the one by 10. If I have a 12 inch hoop, like an eight by 12 hoop, I'm gonna choose one by 12. And if I have a 14 inch length hoop, I'm gonna choose one by 14. All right, so today, what I'm gonna show you is how to do the outer border flange, okay? The outer border flange. So um, that is a two and a half inch strip that you are cutting. Let me show you on the next page how you know which file name you're going to use, okay? So if we go to the next page, there's a nice little chart right here. And at, in your instructions, it tells you that your outer border flange is two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to look at what the fabric cut width is, this column right here. Do you notice what I'm circling here? This is the two and a half inch width cut. That means this is the area I am looking at, okay, for this outer flange border. So then I think to myself, okay, what size of hoop am I going to use? What size of hoop do I have at home <laughs> right now that I'm going to use? If I'm going to use, I'm gonna show you um, this done on a five by seven hoop today because I want all of our five by seveners out there to know that you still can do background quilting and long borders even with a five by seven hoop. So which file am I gonna find? Well, look over here, file name. I'm going to download or pull up on my machine the two by seven inch file. Makes sense, right? All right, because I know that after that's all said and done and quilted and put into my, into my project, the finish size is two, so it all makes sense. Now right here, if you go back this way, I can also see what size to cut my batting. This is telling me to cut my batting at two and a half by eight inches long. But I'll tell you what, as long as it's larger than the box that, that um, stitches out on your machine, you're good. We just put this for an easy reference, but certainly you can just go as long as it's bigger, it'll always be cut down smaller. All right. So I have pulled up the two by seven design on my machine and I am ready to stitch out. Let me show you again on the first page here. If the two by seven is what I'm looking for, 
then this is what it looks like on my machine. Okay, that's the file I'm pulling up. All right, so are you ready to get started? I'm going to show you a couple other things before we move on. This also is in that same download for your background quilting. You will have a page that says, let's go to the very top here. There we go. First hooping. And then because you have a long border, you're going to have to do some multi-hooping and that's okay. It's very simple. Any additional hoopings are on the next page. They are almost identical in instructions, but there's just one little difference, which I'll show you on the machine. Okay. So our very first hooping will, will go according to these directions. Everything after that on that same um, piece of fabric, we'll use the additional hooping instructions. All right? Okay. It's, it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be easy and you won't believe how quick this goes together. The first thing I'm going to do is hoop my light mesh cutaway stabilizer, all right? As I said, I'm doing this in a five by seven hoop today. If you have a larger hoop at home, say you have a, a nine by 14, go ahead and use the nine by 14. Just make sure you pull up the file that matches um, that length of hoop. So in your case, it would be the two by 14 file. All right, because the larger the hoop you have, the less you have to re-hoop. Make sense, right? So we still can do it with this small hoop, we just have to hoop it a few more times and that's okay. But if you have a large hoop, definitely go with the, the file that's gonna allow you to do less hoopings. All right, the first step um, it says on your instructions is to stitch the batting placement line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Lisa asked, what stabilizer did you say? Um, I used the Light Mesh Cutaway Stabilizer from Kimberbell. This is what it looks like in the package. This is Light Mesh Cutaway. It's got a yellow color, okay? Our cutaways are in a yellow to orange ombre effect. And so this, since this is the light one, it's a lighter yellow color label. And that's what I used, okay? You could also use our ultralight cutaway. That would also work. All right. So I have stitched the placement line for my batting. And now I'm going to lay a piece of batting on top. Remember in the instructions it said to cut your batting at two and a half by eight? Yep, I can certainly do that. Or I could just make it longer. doesn't matter because I'm going to be cutting it down to the size I need in a little bit. Okay, I'll go ahead and cut off the extra just not so not to confuse anybody. Okay, here we go. We've just laid it over the top and now it's going to do a tack down line. Kat asks, what's the difference between that and the no-show mesh? Um, Kat, there is no difference. Um, both of those are a mesh. So this light cutaway is a mesh as well. And um, our ultralight and our light are also considered no-show mesh cutaways. So same thing. Okay. So I'm going to cut this piece of batting out just like I would um, an applique piece. So I'm going to just take my applique scissors here. Do we have our overhead today? Awesome. I'll show you over here. In just a minute. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. 
move all this other extra stuff out of the way. So like I said, it just has to be an oversized piece of batting and then you're going to trim it down. Okay, if you are following along in the download, the next step I'm going to um, do is the fabric placement line. And so I'm gonna place that back on the machine and it's just going to go about a quarter inch on the long sides only of this block, okay? And that's gonna show me where to place my fabric. Lisa asked, <clears throat> I am just starting to have everything cut. Did you use iron SFO and a one on all the cut pieces of fabric? Whew. It's a mouthful, isn't it, Lisa? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, we recommend um, a stabilizer from Kimberbell that's very similar to SF101, SF101, and it's called Kimberbell's Fusible Backing. It's a little bit different in texture and in tightness. Um, I think you will really like the, the Kimberbell Fusible Backing for, for backing up your background fabrics. So to answer your first part of your question, um, yes, you would want to fuse that on. I... Uh, did not do that on this one. I, I forgot to do that on this one, but because I am doing um, just background quilting and not doing applique on top of it, it's not going to pull it very much. So I think we'll be okay. So, but normally I would say yes, always iron that onto your background fabrics, especially when you've got applique or other um, heavy stitching on top. All right. Okay, so I have now stitched a quarter inch around just the long sides, and now I'm going to take my paper tape and just roll it. Okay, so I'm going to roll this piece of tape into a little ball, just like so, okay, and place it here at the top and one at the bottom. Okay. Notice where I place this tape. I did not place it on the batting. I placed it on the stabilizer outside of that batting area. All right. So I take my first two and a half inch strip of fabric and it's, you know, quite long. It's going to be longer than this area and that is okay. And I'm going to place it about a quarter inch above this, um, this batting line, okay? Quarter inch to about a half of an inch. I like to do it about a quarter of an inch, but either one will do. You just, the, the idea is that it's just a little bit above there, okay? And then this fabric, this fabric cut lines up. Remember, we cut this at two and a half inches. This line out here is two and a half inches. So it's going to match up perfectly right along those long lines. And then as we get down here to the bottom, remember I've got this tape. I'm just going to lay that fabric over the tape. And now it's not going to shift. All right. So <clears throat> once again, I'm going to place this about a quarter inch to a half an inch above that stitch line at the very top. Tape it then have it uh, a roll of tape down here and then the rest of this tail is just flapping in the wind here <laughs> okay that's what you want you just because this is all going to look like it's one continuous piece because of how it's digitized all right so we'll go ahead and place this back onto the machine where it is going to do tack down lines down the very long sides of the fabric Okay, um, <laughs> thank you, Colleen. She says, fusible, Kimberbell fusible backing is the best ever. That is very nice of you, Colleen. Glad it has been working for you. 
Go to the overhead. All right, so as you can see here, it stitched down. This is the fabric tack down line, and it stitched down right along the long edges only. Why didn't it stitch across or up here? That's because we want this to look continuous, and we don't want a, a line going across when we go to to quilt the rest of this of this. Uh, border right so it only tacks down along the sides you don't have to worry about this showing because it will be sewn into your seam when you put it all together so it's great you don't have to pick it out and you don't have to uh, worry about it showing it's all good it's so close to the edge that it's going to just go right into that quarter inch seam you'll never have to to uh, worry about seeing that again all right so once you've done that now it is time to do the quilting. Let's give it a whirl. At this point, I like to say that can work its magic and we get to just chat for a minute <laughs> while it's doing its thing. All right. Um, Elaine is asking, how do I get the instructions like you have? Um, that is in your download. So it's not in the download for this pillow. It is in a separate download for your background quilting. So it is a PDF. And uh, if you have any problems finding that, you uh, definitely let us know. But that's where it should be is... Um, I, I just opened it up last night, so it is there. All right. Cheryl asked a good question. Let's pull this up because this is a great time to talk about it. So Cheryl, she says, when we cut our border strips, should we cut then one to two inch longer to accommodate shrinkage with quilting? Cheryl, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, this is a tough one. It's yes and no, and I'll tell you the, the pros and cons of both, maybe. In, in this download, it told us what exactly to cut, right? I think it said one and a half by 16 and a half inches and one and a half by 18 and a half inches because we knew that that was the exact size you needed for that border. So many of you probably cut it that way. Um, and that's okay. In fact, I cut mine that way. I cut exactly what it asked for. Um, when you are doing something like this, where there is no additional applique on it or, or dense stitching, you're probably going to be fine just cutting it as is. But what we recommend in the download instructions is that when possible, especially with like a larger quilt and you're doing really long borders, we want to give you some more wiggle room in case there's some shrinkage. So you're going to add about two inches to the length of your border. All right. So we say that as a recommendation because sometimes you will need it again, especially if you're adding additional appliques onto it um, or very dense stitching on top of that border. Sometimes we add, you know, that kind of thing to our borders then you might want to add a couple of inches. But in this case, we're doing a small project. We're only doing the quilting. Um, you're going to be fine. Uh, you should be just fine with cutting it as is. I hope that helps. Okay. Pat says she found it on her computer, but it won't open. Okay. Pat, you might need to um, update your Adobe Reader Acrobat Pro. Acrobat? Acrobat? Something like that. <laughs> Acrobat. Acrobat Reader is what Andrew's telling me. Ooh, this is so cute, you guys. Um, you may you may need to um, do that. And uh, if you update that to the newest version, it'll probably open right up. Of course, if you have any questions beyond that, let us know. And um, our customer care team will also be happy to assist you with that. <gasps> Look how cute. My goodness. 
I just love it. I just want to stare at it all day. <laughs> it's just cute. And I love how it, it just works with the pillow itself. It all coordinates. Beautiful. All right. So that is it for now. <laughs> Remember when I talked about the first hooping? Let's go to this camera. And we said first hooping. We just did the first hooping, you guys. Easy peasy, right? Now we go to the second hooping or what we would call additional hoopings. And it's just a little bit different, like barely a little different. And I'll show you how here right now. Oh, good. Pat got it. Who knows? You know, all of a sudden, bam, there it is. <laughs> I'm glad it worked for you, Pat. So what I'm going to do to do the second hooping is I'm going to take this out of the hoop. And I'm basically going to repeat what I just did. Of course, I want to first cut away any extra stabilizer. So flip your fabric up so that that tail, remember that tail flapping in the wind, isn't going to get cut. We don't want that to cut. All right. So I am just going to trim that up. All around. All four sides. There we go. When you go across the top, make sure you lift that up because you don't want to cut off your fabric. Don't cut any fabric at this point. You're only cutting your stabilizer. Another suggestion would be, you know, someone was asking earlier about adding length to your borders. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and go to the front. Another suggestion would be just to cut your widths of strips. Just keep cutting widths of strips and then cut it. And then you quilt the whole strip without cutting its length yet. You just quilt the entire strip. And then after you've done that, cut it to the length that you need for your project. You could certainly do it that way too. Okay. All right, so I'm going to set this aside because I want to hoop some more stabilizer right there. Again, this is our light cutaway stabilizer from Kimberbell. You could also use, uh, we have a, an ultralight that would work well with this. We use our ultralight for like quilt blocks that don't have extra um, stitches on it besides the quilting. We think that works really nicely for that. All right. So we are going to use the same file we used before. In this case, I'm using the, the two by seven file name. Again, because I cut this at two and a half inches, my five by seven hoop has the length of seven. So that's why I picked the two by seven file. I hooped my stabilizer and now I'm going to stitch the placement line for my batting. You know how this works, right? Susan says, so cute. Ah, I agree, Susan. It's pretty stinking cute. Lisa, I'm glad you love it too. Yeah, it's just, it's just fun, isn't it? To see it all coordinate. Absolutely love it. Mari, she says, I didn't get to wash all of these, and that's okay. That is good news because, in fact, the next thing she says is, will these be saved to view later and where? And Mari, you are in the right spot. This is exactly uh, where you're going to find it. It will always be recorded, and you can find it on our YouTube channel, which I think is easier to find later on, these tutorials, because you can search it a little bit easier than you can Facebook, but Kimberbell YouTube channel, like and subscribe while you're there so you'll never miss one. And then uh, you can also find it on Facebook, always recorded. So go back to parts one and two from earlier this week for sure. All right, so what happened here is that it stitched exactly like we did before. It was the placement outline for the, um, the batting. And remember, we rolled a couple pieces of tape, 
we put one at the or we're going to put one here at the top and one at the bottom okay this is where this is the only thing that makes it just a little different for any additional hooping and it's super simple all you need to do remember this tail here it still needs to be quilted right so all i'm going to do is where this ends can we get more up close on this andrew Okay. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. So this, this is the top. This is where it ended. You can see that batting, right? And then this is the rest of this tail over here. Woo, is the rest that still needs to be quilted. All you do is fold the fabric on itself with right sides together. And you just fold it exactly where that batting ended. Do you see that batting right there? Ooh, even better. I like that. Okay. So once again, now that we have a real up close, you just fold this on top of itself. Batting is right there. This batting is where is exactly where you're going to line up to this top line. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place that right on top. And then fold the rest of my fabric down. Okay, remember we had that roll of tape up there. That's good. We want it. Keep it there. So that's tapes in place. We also have the roll of tape down here. That's good. Oh, you know what I didn't do? But that's okay. I forgot to do the the batting. Oh my gosh. Is anyone? Yeah, Pat is telling me. <laughs> Arlise is telling me. When do you add the batting? <sighs> Rewind. <laughs> I got so excited, you guys. I got so stinking excited that I just like forget the batting. Everyone's telling me, uh, batting, batting. <laughs> yep. <sighs> you know, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Let's go to the top camera. Oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Not thinking. Here is the outline for my batting and voila. My friends, there's the batting. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put it on our machine and we're gonna do the top stitch. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, maybe you should eat lunch first. Oh, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Sheila. She says, you make this fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you guys are patient with me. Hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and go up here. <laughs> you know what this tells me? You guys are such good students. <laughs> because you're like, wait a minute. Where's the batting? <sighs> Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> guys, the batting. This is when Kim uses her filter. <laughs> because right now I'm like, oh, that was so dumb, Kim. Okay, there we go. Well, here we go. You good students, you. All right, the batting. We trim it up. Wow. You guys, I will never do that again. <laughs> but now you know what's about to happen, don't you? Maybe. Let's go ahead. Now you're gonna play place your tape at the top. Nope. No, now you're going to do your tack down or your now you're gonna do I'm just this is all just a ploy. The test. It's it's the test. Wink wink. Oh my gosh. 
<sighs> it's a test to make sure you guys were paying attention. <laughs> Ah. Mm, well, it took took me a minute. Gail said, "At least you remembered. If it were me, I would have gotten through the whole project, and then I would have been like, oh no, oh no, where's the batting?'" Ah, this is all part of my master plan to test how smart you guys are. Because Kimmy, Kimmy got the smarts today. Oh my gosh. I just really am excited about this quilting, okay? I just want to see it quilted. But I got to do a few extra steps before that. You guys are so sweet to me. Okay, roll that tape. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm, I'm going. I'm carrying on. Here we go. Tape, 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 doom, boom, 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 roll this right back on top of each other. We're not spending any, wasting any more time on Kim doing wrong stuff. Now you're going to place this up right next to the batting. I knew something looked funny. Oh, you guys. And then when you place it down, it's going to line up on those long edges. And then you tape it down here because you have the roll of tape to hold it. Okay, guys. Here we go. Let's go to the front. Now tell me, what should we do next, my friends? <laughs> Tack down line on the long sides, right? Okay, let's go ahead and go to the front. Andrew, do you like collect blooper reels for this? We, we could totally have one, like really easily. Like it wouldn't take many episodes either to have like a full blooper reel. We have a whole server dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you guys hear that? Say that again, Andrew, in the microphone. Mm. We, we have a whole server dedicated to your to your wonderful projects. Ah, mm. just, just because yeah. you do so many. Andrew wants and to keep his job. <laughs> I'd like to work here on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, how many times do I start a video that's been recorded, right? We do like all kinds of recordings. This stuff is live, but how many times do I start and I go, blah, 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 and then I go, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Kim, you're I, I just talk. great. Mm -hmm. You're you're just. Mm. You, yeah, you're like, you're that, like my husband. That's wonderful. You're, you're just fine. Kim. Guys, Kim, when she does like, like our other recordings, it's, it's professional. It's like a newscast. There's no. <laughs> No, nothing goes wrong at all. We never have to refilm anything. Never. Never wrong. Except when I'm live. Hmm. Yeah, you guys know that's not the truth, huh? All right, you got me. Tack down lines. Keeping it in place. Now for my favorite part. Let's go and quilt, shall we? Oh, my gosh. I'm glad we have one more hooping so I can get it right. How's that? <laughs> Shannon says Andrew wants a bonus check. <laughs> yep. Marsha says one more CD to sell Kim's bloopers. Oh, Marsha, a CD could not hold all of Kim's bloopers. That is for sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, all righty. What did you say about Netflix? I said, I said, look for it on Netflix. Oh, look for it on Netflix. There you go. <laughs> you guys, we are going to get this right this time. I'm going to have you walk me through it, too. <laughs> Shout to the camera. Shout. Type it in. Whatever. Be like, okay, Kim, this is what you do. Oh, wow. All right. See, I, I've got lots of friends here that are like, it's okay. It's all right. They might be thinking in their minds, oh my gosh, that girl is losing her mind. But it's okay. 
Uh, all right. Yeah, Mikey says maybe a few DVDs. Yeah. You guys, I don't know. I got lots of things going on in your brain all right now. <laughs> Okay, it's it's continuing to do a scene. Is there anything I can help? I mean, we're we're just we're just chatting it up during our lunch hour. Is anyone watching this at work? <laughs> we won't tell. Oh, I love what Beth says. Okay, I gotta pull that up. I will probably giggle when quilting my borders, just remembering these fun poopers. Thanks. Thanks, Beth. I appreciate you. <laughs> At home, wink, wink. Yeah. Libby, there's a question. I forgot to mention, I got my girls, Libby and Brielle here, and Andrew. And they are making sure we're keeping it, <laughs> keeping it real and asking questions. So, Libby, what's the question? Sheila is wondering if you would mind showing the back of the pillow. Hmm. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Here we go. It is an envelope style closure. So super simple to do. Um, the directions will walk you through the steps, so we won't go through that today. But very simple to do. Um, you're going to take two pieces of fabric, sew a hem on one on each long side, one long side of each fabric, and then you just um, yeah, sew it all together. Here's the pillow form. The nice thing is, is that this is um, an 18 inch pillow form and Kimberbell sells them. And think about like all of these, like um, home is where the haunt is or the new event. Here's a plug for the new Kimberbell event called No Place Like Home. That also uses an 18 by 18 inch pillow. Um, once you have this, then you can just swap out the new look for it for each month or season. So kind of fun. Okay, this is like we're rewinding and redoing, and it's maybe we call it Groundhog Day at Kimberbell. We're now taking this out, and we're going to repeat the process. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It just looks continuous. Wow, wow. So, Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Let's see. <laughs> Evelyn says, you make this so long fun. Oh, I'm so glad, Evelyn. Thank you. What do I do next, guys? <laughs> I do know. Okay, here we go. We're going to cut this baby out. We're going to lift up the tail. It's flapping in the wind. And cut. Okay. All right. Once again, I told you earlier that if you want an even shorter way of doing this, easier, well, it's not that it's easier, it's just eliminates a couple of steps by cutting that batting. Um, you can follow along on a tutorial that I did for Candy Cane Lane, and I show you how to do it that way. Isn't that great? Look at that. It just looks continuous, but we still have this to do. So I'm counting on myself getting it right this time. <laughs> if I can find my stabilizer. For it. There it is. All right. I am going to hoop my stabilizer. And then I'm going to stitch a placement line for my batting, which I will then place the batting on top of. <laughs> because that's what you do. That's what the directions say to do. <laughs> oh, can you see that if you had a larger hoop, you wouldn't be rehooping this so many times? So again, find find the file size that works best for your length of hoop. <laughs> Tana, I'm so glad. And uh, Tana, 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 oh. I can't remember. I think it's Dana. She says, I've really enjoyed this so long. So many tips and tricks. I love everything, Kimberbell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here because you guys are what makes it so fun. This would be like really boring for me if I was just talking to Andrew. Ugh. <laughs> you should see the look he's giving me now. Okay, guys. No, it really is truly such a fun thing 
to do for you guys. I hope it helps. All right. So there you go. The, the placement line for your batting. <laughs> yes, my friends, I will get it right this time. I think. Yes. Now I'm second guessing everything in life. Everything. What will I ever do? Second guessing myself all the time on this stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, then of course my, something happened. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I need to uh, rethread or something. Hold on, hold the phone. <laughs> what questions could I answer while I quickly change the thread? <laughs> La -di da di da. Anything? Questions, comments, recommendations for lunch? <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Arliss Knowles asks, if you have to piece the border, should you piece it before quilting or after? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, you want to piece it before. You want to piece your border just as one long strip, just as if it was just one piece of fabric. And then you'll quilt on top of that. In fact, if you go to the go to either our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, like I said, I think it's easier to find on YouTube. Um, you will look for the candy cane lane so along. And I believe it's part three when I talk about those borders. And I piece them together first and then I quilted them. Great question. Okay. Okay, Lisa Schwartz. Uh-huh. Oh. Lisa Schwartz is wondering. Oh, it just flew away. <laughs> All right, I'll try and find it. I'll come back. All right. Guys, look at what happened. I did it right. <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Give Kim a cheer, a shout, hooray. Did it right because I tacked down my batting. <sighs> now think in your head. You don't even have to look at your directions at this point because it's like second nature, right? What am, what's going to happen next? What will happen next? All right. Now it's going to do my outline for the fabric. So I know where to place the fabric. Diane, you asked a really good question here. Ooh, let's pull that up. Can you put the pieces side by side in a larger hoop so you don't waste stabilizer? Diane, the good news is yes, and please do. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, if you have a larger hoop, then absolutely, even with a five by seven, I could probably fit like two of the, the smaller border widths in there. And you would just do that um, either in software, you can just add one border right next to the other, um, or you could do it on your machine where you can um, click on the add button and then you can um, shift them over side by side. But really like that is such a great way to utilize all your stabilizer and not have any waste. If you have a larger hoop, you, you know, you might be able to get three or four strips in across and you just do the exact same steps. You just can do it all at once instead of one hooping at a time. So great, great question there. Whoop. Um, Abby Stitches. Hi, Anvil. She says, did you choose your hoop size length based on the length of your border border to have an even stitch out segments to reach the end of your border length? Um, that's a great question, Anvil. Um, No, I am solely basing. Uh, I'm not I'm not basing what file I pull up based on this. Um, I am basing it on what what my biggest size is hoop is. Unless, say for example, 
let's let's show this and this might actually help okay so i've got this still here let's first first things first and then ambiel i'm going to answer your question a little bit easier here i'm going to put the the roll tape at the top and at the bottom and then remember we fold these strips on top of itself okay so right sides together and then we're going to place it right here okay i am in a five by seven hoop so i'm going to place this down and look at that it actually does go right basically to the edge so i'm fine with this one but what if like i had been doing it the whole time in a nine by 14 hoop and then i only have like this much left to go right I wouldn't use the 9 by 14 hoop again. It's at that point I would actually pull up a length, like a 7 inch length, that I would finish the rest off because it's just, it would just be a waste. Does that make sense? So, you know, I always, I don't worry about the length of the, the border strips so much as I work with the hoop I have first. And then as you get to the tail end, work with whatever size would work best for you because you're going to just cut it off anyway. I hope that helps answer that question, Anvil. Okay, so now I've taped it at the top, right? I've taped it at the bottom. Everything's lined up. And now I can stitch um, my tack down lines for the fabric and then finally get to that cute quilting. All right. Christy says she's logging in late and wondered if I quilted the inner border. Um, I'm not going to, I mean, I could, but I'm not sure how long you guys would want to be here. So it's just the exact same steps um, as I did for what I'm showing now for the outer border. Exact same steps, just thinner strips. So I did cut them. Um, this your fabric strips as outlined in the instructions are one and a half inches wide. So I did cut the inner border strips at one and a half inches wide. And then because I'm using a five by seven, I would pull up the one by seven file. Okay. All right. So there we have it. We've got our border up here. We just have this little strip left to do. We've done our tack down line along the long sides, and now we are ready to quilt this, and then we'll be done. Ann Beal says, so all the sizes are the same size proportionally. That is correct, Ann Beal. Um, hold on just a minute. Okay. Um, yeah, she's asking, are all the sizes proportional? Yes, and that's an, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I love our quilting, background quilting system so much at Kimberbell. Because no matter what size hoop you have, you can have a very small hoop, you could have a 4x4 hoop, you could have the 9x14 hoop and everything in between, it's all proportional. So... It doesn't, it doesn't matter which hoop size you have. It, it all works. It's just that if you have a larger hoop, you're going to hoop less. That's all the differences. It's okay. a great question. Oh, this is turning out cute. How many of you got your homework done? <laughs> Guess what? I did not. <laughs> but I'm going to finish it the rest of it today. I just have, let's see. I'm almost done. I actually have this rainbow block still to do. Almost done. But I will have it done today because when I get home from work today, I'm going to have a little bit of me time, a little bit of Kim time, and I'm going to sew the rest of this together. Super excited. Anita asked a great question. Let me pull this up. She says, could you sew the outer border to the inner border and sew them or consider them as one border? Yes, you absolutely could do that. Um, you know, if you take the, the inner border and the outer border, sew them together, take what that measurement is, that's the file you would pull up and it would 
um, sew it all together. Now, some people might think, well, why aren't you using clear blue tiles for this? Well, in this case, we're using block by block quilting. Um, you certainly could use clear blue tiles, but where I use clear blue tiles is when I'm sewing like mostly like when I'm sewing fabrics together, I'm piecing blocks and then I'm using my background, you know, I want to do a background quilting on those blocks and it's something that doesn't have like a lot of the appliques and such on it. Um, I will use clear blue tiles. I use clear blue tiles when I want to see the quilting on the front and all the way through the back because remember with clear blue tiles, we make a quilt sandwich. We want to see the quilting on the front and on the back, just like you would a traditional quilt. But this, we don't see the, it's a pillow. So you don't see the quilting on the back and there's lots of appliques. So instead you want to use the method for block by block quilting. Now, if you have um, a small hoop, like a five by seven, and you want to do background quilting for a larger block like this one, I showed you in part two of the series um, that I did on Wednesday that you can do that with clear blue tiles. So there, there's ways uh, to use both. Okay. All right, there we have it. Ah, it's done, it's done. Let me cut this baby apart. And then we've got our first strip done. Super excited. <sighs> Thanks for being with me today and making me laugh <laughs> at myself. It's always a good thing, right? We can't take this these things too seriously. You know, there's only a few hundred people watching Kim totally flop on her face. You know, big deal. <laughs> You're all friends. It's all good. <laughs> there you have it, my friends. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So fun. And remember, these, uh, these tack down lines that you see along the edge, those are all going to be sewn into the seam. So you're not going to. It's not going to be seen, seen in the scene at all. There you go. All right. So I hope that helped. That is it for this so long. Can you believe it? We did it. We did it. We did it. There's a song. We did it. We did it. Hooray. Oh, and that might be going back to my early childhood days. Growing. What is that? Dora. 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 We did it. We did it. Hooray. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that takes me back. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. Again, if you missed any of the, the parts that we did earlier, you can still catch them on YouTube or Facebook. You can watch them today, tomorrow, or a year or 10 years from now. Um, you, they're always recorded and will always be there for you. I hope it helped inspire you to jump in and get started or to try something new that you've never done before. And, uh, you know, just, just uh, helped you along the way. So thank you for joining me for this lunch hour so, so along. Um, I will see you again. Um, let's see, our next so along, I believe, is for... Is it spring showers or two scoops or we'll do something for some, one of those. I know spring showers. There's a sew along every Wednesday in March. It's going to be so fun. Every Wednesday in March, 12 noon um, mountain time. Join me because we'll go through uh, spring showers. And I'm sure that we'll have a sew along in between there too. These are just too much fun to do with you guys. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. If we didn't get to all your questions, we'll be sure to go back and try to answer what we can. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.